Hello and welcome to our Digital Design Day video. Uh, we were part of project number 19099, which involved the understanding and improvement of the washing coding system implemented by the Large Binocular Telescope Observatory. My name is Zach Kirch and I will be going over the big picture of what the LBTO does and the general problem statement that we were tasked with. So this slide is our digital poster, which would have been printed and displayed on design day. It gives a brief summary of the LBTO and the problem statement, an overview of the current wash and coating process, and our resulting design for an improved wash and coating process implemented at the observatory itself. Uh, throughout this video, these points will be discussed in much more detail, and to craft a more involved presentation, we'll be using visuals on the ensuing slides. Uh, feel free to pause the video and read the poster details further, if you so choose. First and foremost, we think it's necessary to thoroughly describe the Large Binocular Telescope as it provides a clear motivation for our project and gives insight into how important this truly is. As shown by the picture on the left, the LBT system consists of two 8.4 meter primary mirrors that focus the light onto an adaptive secondary mirror. The secondary mirror is visible in the picture on the top left and is integrated at the bottom section of the metallic arm. The secondary mirror has magnetic components and a flexible frame which allow it to correct for atmospheric distortion present in the incoming wavefront. This light uh, cone is then directed to the tertiary mirror as seen on the metallic arm on the left side of this main diagram here. Uh, and depending on the orientation of the tertiary mirror, it sends this light into one of several devices, including the LBTI, Lucy, Pepsi, etc. Uh, this slide demonstrates essentially what I talked about in the previous slide, but gives a nice visual representation of how these light rays travel throughout the system. We believe another important talking point is the application of this LBTO system as an underlying motivation for this project. One of the main applications of the LBTO system is in conjunction with the interferometer present in the middle of the system, the LBTI. As shown in this picture here, if observing a bright distant star, it has the resources to provide a phase shift to one arm of the light and null this object. But the dust cloud surrounding it will be offset, inducing an optical path difference, which allows it to evade the nulling in interferometry um, and be seen. The detection of this dust cloud is of great importance to NASA, who wants to gather this information to see if it's worthwhile to send a 30 meter telescope into orbit in the near future to take high resolution photos of these planetary systems. As for the problem we were tasked to investigate, the LBTO has a major problem when cleaning and coating the secondary mirror of the system. As seen on the image in the left, this is a very thin shell mirror, only 50 microns thick, and therefore an extremely fragile piece of equipment. Currently, these mirrors have to be removed from the system, transported to Mount Graham to a facility at the old Sunnyside campus, whose, al whose luminizing chamber is pictured on the right, and cleaned and coated there. This whole process is long and dangerous. So we looked at the potential benefits and costs of installing an aluminizing chamber and clean room tent up at the Mount Graham site to expedite the cleaning and coating process and reduce the overall risk of the procedure. The details of this analysis will be provided in the remainder of the video. And here as we talk about the telescope mirror manufacturing, a telescope is a device that is used by scientists to create an image of distance objects. The most familiar is the optical telescope that is uses a series of lenses that focus on the light. The telescope uses lenses called refracting telescopes and mirror called reflecting telescopes. Difficulties might appear in some telescope manufacturing process. And here as we talk about the telescope materials, a telescope is made of mirrors or lenses and hardware components that hold the optical system together to enable it to focus on the intended object. The lenses used are made of special glasses which clearer and purer than the ordinary size. And here as we talk about the critical aspects of telescope mirror, the most critical aspects in manufacturing telescope is the accuracy of lenses and mirrors. It's important to focus on the accuracy of lenses and mirrors. During the cutting stages, the size and dimensions are measured with a lot of care and aware. The coating process is valuable in order to secure the lenses and mirrors to ensure they are fully protected. Last but not least, telescope mirror development. A more dramatic area that needs to put into consideration is the electric accessories that holds together the telescope. Astronomers need to develop telescope with computers that will automatically point the telescope to the intended object and moreover track it at night. 
New coating materials could be developed to improve protection and prevent the light through lenses. The cleaning and stripping process that we have proposed is no different from the original. It just does not require transfer to an external facility. It would still go in the order of a degreaser, liquinox soap rinse, copper sulfate uh, wash to remove the old coating, uh, potassium hydroxide wash, nitric acid wash, DI water rinse, uh, transferring it to the aluminization chamber where the aluminization process is run on both the substrate and a piece of observer glass which is used to test the coating outcome without messing with the original mirror's coating. Pictured here, starting from the left, is a modular soft wall clean room. It is a design that is not exactly the one that we recommend, but it's a similar idea. It gives you a good representation of what that might look like. A lifting fixture is next to that. It is used to hold the mirror up whenever necessary without applying too much stress to it, and there's a drawing below. The Teflon load spreaders pictured to the right of that are what are used to attach the mirror to the lifting fixture. Uh, they use screws with uh, magnets to attach it. Um, and the handling fixture to the right of that is used whenever the mirror needs to be manipulated by hand. And below that is a drawing of the flipping shell, which is used to uh, flip the mirror over whenever needed, which does happen multiple times throughout the process. LBTO now has high-risk cleaning, coating, and transportation mirror method. The secondary mirror, which is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, has a 20 hours one-way trip to Sunnyside cleaning facility. The road on Mount Graham is rough. This long-way transportation may damage the mirror. The Sunnyside facility is using CO2 snow to clean the mirror, but it can damage the mirror because the secondary mirror is 50 micron thickness. It means the CO2 snow may freeze the mirror. The chamber in Sunnyside is open from top side and people have to use crane to get the mirror in there. This extra method increases the probability of damaging the mirror. Chamber is made in 1950s and the chamber may not work well and the material may not stick on the mirror. And this will lead an extra cost. How do we prevent the risk? We can follow three main work principles, which means one, read the instruction, two, move in the mirror. Also, we can use UV laser to clean the mirror. Coating mirror with new chamber. Since all equipment are designed in LBTO, the secondary mirror doesn't need to run trip or fail deeds during the travel. The new facility design will be talked about later. The two biggest pieces of equipment that will be needing space in the observatory installations will be the clean tent and the vacuum chamber. The clean tent will be placed in a clean room after some space is cleared for it, and the vacuum chamber will be placed in the warehouse, where plenty of space is available for it. The vacuum chamber and clean tent need a power supply. This power will be brought from the break room located northwest of the building as seen in the facility drawing, where a main breaker for these two pieces of equipment, represented as a pink box in the breaker room, will be installed. A 12 gauge cable in its cable conduct will then connect the main breaker to each individual breaker, one for the clean tent and one for the vacuum chamber. These cables will be placed on a cable tray that is currently in place along the walls of the building. The routes of the cable are indicated by the yellow lines on the facility layout drawings. The individual breakers, represented by pink boxes, will be placed right next to their respective piece of equipment and will also be connected to it by a shorter cable, represented by blue lines. As one can see in this drawing, the clean tent will be occupying 120 feet squared of the clean room, while the vacuum chamber plus the three feet wide space required around it due to safety measures of operation, will be occupying 575.5 feet squared. To show the elevation changes along the power line, a side view of the two power lines is shown in the next two slides for each the vacuum chamber and the clean tent. The calculations to determine if the floor of the warehouse would be able to handle the load of the vacuum chamber were performed. 
it was determined that the load of the chamber on the float is of 54.6 pounds per square foot. Having a floor capacity of 400 pounds per square foot, the floor of the warehouse can easily handle the load of the chamber. Our team decided to install a new vacuum chamber, which is JMDMJ on the Mountain Graham. It has several advantages compared to the old facility at Sunnyside. Since new, the new vacuum chamber is open from the side, it shall reduce the risk of lifting up the mirror from the top door into the chamber. The efficiency has been improved 3.5 times faster than the old facility because the new vacuum chamber is using mechanical pump, root pump, and diffusion pump rather than the oil displacement method. There is no transportation needed for the new facility since we are installing the new vacuum chamber on the Mountain Granham, so it highly reduced the transportation from the Mountain Granham to Tucson. However, the cost of the old facility is included in the operation cost, and the new vacuum chamber is cost at $42,500. The payback period of the new vacuum chamber is calculated at 3.54 years.